Hello, hello there, and we are live. So yeah, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry for the delay. I think there's something, there's a big problem going on with StreamYard. It's so hard for people to, you know, just get along. But, you know, um, Aragon Guna told me, hey, man, let's wait for one hour. And then, you know, uh-huh. started working now. So um, Darren should have been our uh, special guest down here. But, uh, you know, he just sent me a message that, you know, He'll sit this one out of the chart, so you know, no problem. So, <laughs> Oregon Guna, me and you, yet again, back again. See ya, let's talk, my brother, man. But how are you doing, first of all, man? Nice to see you down here. Episode 30 of our show together, man, the Dial and Cloud show. Talk to us, man. I'm doing pretty good, pretty upset from yesterday, but um, I know we'll get into that, and um, I don't know. Streamyard just must have not have been our friend today, so <laughs> kind of frustrating as well. We're an hour late for everyone, but that's all right. We're here. We're here together. And uh, shout out Darren. Shout out Josh. I see you guys in the uh, chat. Um, yeah, we got a lot to talk about from yesterday, and looking forward to the weekend. So yeah, let's dive into it. Um, see, yeah, um, Oregon Guna. There are no smiles yet. I'm still seeing some Arsenal fans, you know, smiling about yesterday. But, you know, I have a different take. For me, it was a disappointing draw. Um, I'll go into the specifics later on. But, of course, you're the guy that, you know, you talk about this thing, you know, on our show. So, uh, I'll I'll head straight to you, man. What was that yesterday? (laughs) That horrible defensive show in the first half. Darren, I, I know there's something you have to say. Uh, please uh, uh, get it typing on the charts, yeah? And see Oregon going to set us, you know, just, just set it rolling, man. That disappointing first half yesterday, man. Talk to us. You know, when, when, when you know that they don't have their fans there necessarily, I know they were on the ground shooting off fireworks and so forth. When you have, you know, scored several goals and only conceded four or five, you know, the last six weeks or so, you kind of come in there with, you know, I think a little bit of a big head. Maybe we were a little bit overconfident at times. Um, But the first 15 minutes I thought was all right. You know, we got a goal in the 11th or 12th minute. And I was saying, okay, you know, smell blood, you know, step (laughs) step on the back of them and let's, you know, finish the job. Let's get two or three goals as soon as possible. And we can, you know, kind of wipe our hands away. You know, but of course that didn't happen. Hmm. So we're we're faced now with you know it's completely up in the air, going back to uh, Munich, unfortunately, which I thought for sure we would need a three goal, you know, three goal <laughs> difference, you know, three goal coverage, you could say. Um, but yeah, the bozo gene struck with Gabriel. I don't know why he just didn't yeah. boot it out of bounds, but I think Rea was part of the problem. I think Rea actually put pressure on him because he didn't want to. Get- <laughs> <laughs> Who knows what he was thinking? But, you know, those are the mistakes that, like I've said before, will kill us against big teams. And it did. Um, Declan Rice wasn't, you know, really watching Goretzka, who was running in behind him. There was so yeah. much space on Rice, you could have packed a, you know, pretty much parked a double-decker bus there. And, you know, he's got to be aware of that. Against Luton and Crystal Palace and Wolves and possibly even Chelsea and United, you know... <laughs> They're not going to have that kind of space. They're not positionally good as Bayern Munich is. And so I think there's a little bit, there was a little lax on our part defensively, thinking that, oh, you know, no matter what we do defensively, it's always worked out. So it's going to work out today. And we just need to concentrate on getting goals. You know, but the thing Mm -hmm. is, it's Bayern Munich. Again, it's a team we've kind of overpassed over, you know, passed over a bit in some of our YouTube shows because we're talking about City and Madrid so much. Yeah, exactly. In the face yesterday, they slowed the tempo down. They did a little bit of dark arts with Harry Kane and his little elbows. Mm. I still think that's a red card. I know people may have a different agree on that because you can see he turns and looks and then hits them. And then hits him, yeah. That that was a clear red card. Yeah, to me, that's a clear card. And I told you, I try to reverse it, you know. If it was Arsenal getting that, you know, doing that, they would probably call it. They'll probably call it. I, I agree. Been football and Arsenal so long, that's kind of the way I see things now. When things don't really go our way, it's like, well, 
it would go our way if it was so, if it was on us, right? That's kind of how I felt, especially in these Champions League games, because you never know what the ref is really going to do, right? We're used to the same one, Stuart Taylor, um, Andre Mariner, et cetera, Mike Dean, but we don't know a lot of these Swedish, Spanish, German, Polish referees, right? And they see uh, uh, the game a lot different, I think, than some of the English refs do. And Drew's right, he did look like <coughs> So yeah, to stop him. I don't know if it's deliberately, you know, hit him directly in the face, but he physically tried to stop him, you know, which would have yeah. been a foul itself. So I, there's little things with that, but I'm not going to blame the ref. It's not the ref's fault that we can you know, play the ball. It's not the ref's fault that Havertz kind of, to be honest, was pretty average yesterday. It's not the ref's fault. Uh, not, not average. I'm the biggest average supporter in, to, you know, in some time now. He was sure. poor. It wasn't yeah. average. It was poor. Yeah, it was, it was below average, right? It was, and, it was poor. Totally you know, I, poor. I just think that we were caught off guard by how well they positioned themselves on the pitch and how well they counterattacked. Because remember, that first goal was just, I mean, they just ticky-tacky touched the ball a little bit in front, and there he was in. Yeah. And, you know, and I said yesterday on the reaction show, Connor, there's two things I would do. Number one is get rid of Zinchenko absolutely immediately. And then number two, I would bring in a general contractor to build a wall between David Reyes' legs. Because there's a point to think, I hate to make the comparison, but if Ramsdale's in there, does Ramsdale close his legs? Probably so. <laughs> he closes. You know? But see, yeah, but, but Kivio started that half. Kivio started that half, and he was being ripped apart left, right, and center. So right. I, I think blaming, blaming Zichenko would be a little bit... Uh, over the top because even That's Kivio that was there was being so roasted alive like a live chicken. I'm, playing, I'm saying Zinchenko overall was absolutely dog shit. It was the worst substitution he could have made. So I, yeah, no, I jumped into the second half. Sorry, Tony. No, jumping into the second half, he put Zinchenko on there with Tom, without Tommy Asu. It makes it, it, it makes no sense. And what did Zinchenko do? He basically stood around, you know, like a merry-go-round in the center of midfield while the whole left side of our defense was wide open. You know, and it's, you know, I just don't know what Zinchenko brings to the table anymore. He can't to the team anymore. He gets caught in midfield. He got caught yesterday. Ooh. There was a ball the 65th minute that they played. I think it was um, Sané on the right or Coleman on the right played a ball to the middle, and Zinchenko just completely missed the ball. Like, he stuck his leg out, but he completely missed it. And it's like, you have to stop that ball because they were in. That ball went right to Harry Kane or went right to um, Musiala. You know, those things like that. Like, it's schoolboy stuff. You can't let a 30-yard a ball from the wing go right into the middle of our midfield and attack in, in our defensive it, third. It, it, to, to shot. I mean, you just can't let that happen. And get Georgina was shit yesterday. He showed his oh, age yesterday. That's I, a big one. I gave him, I think, a five or a four yesterday. It's just... It wasn't what we expected, so we were really let down. But I get the bright side is that again we had to fight back, and that we have that fight, we have that determination to get that tying goal, that winning goal. You know, and speaking yeah. of winning goals, Saka, Saka, slow the ball down and just curve it in your right foot. It's a goal, three two. We go home, or we go back to we go back home. And cuddle up with the missiles and have a nice glass of Chianti. Exactly. You know? But what did he do? No, he touched the ball further and kicked nowhere and fell, Manuel Neuer and fell down. That was not a penalty. I looked at that, bro. We all looked at that. That was a guy. Even me, I agree. It's not a penalty. I, and for some around. reason, yeah, the, for some reason, I even see that this referee even even helped us rather than even uh, even after that match drew gunners would be a witness i said it down here yeah but i, I don't blame the referee i, I blame the players not even make a lot in the in the first place sometimes these players have to also assume responsibility and take accountability for what they do on pitch because as far as i'm concerned make a uh, uh, put in the, the the right people that he felt I, I that I felt I think a, a general consensus of of Arsenal fans will, will actually are set to put down there. Again, I'm still thinking about the fitness of Tomiyasu because if Tomiyasu was fully fit, I think he would be in that pitch. 
but I don't think he's fit. I, he was on the bench, but I think it's all gimmicks. He's right. not fit enough. Because how, how, why was Zichenko there in the first place? Why was he there in the first place? Injured. Yeah, you got to. You, I think you're right. Tommy Asso's probably. I, I think he's injured. It's just probably for gimmicks. We're just down there for gimmicks. And oh my God, we touched uh, on the topic of David Raya in the build up. Oh my God, what is this guy doing several yards away from his goal line? I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's an added touch on Gabriel. Right, it just made the space closer for him to give the ball away. If he would have popped that to uh, Raya, you know, Harry Kane would have probably ran right around Gabriel and nicked it right off of Raya. But the thing is, if he would have stayed back more in his box, he would have had a lot longer run, you know, for Gabriel to give to pass the ball back. Harry Kane would have been able to catch it if he would have just passed it right. But he passed it again to Jorginho, who didn't even get the ball himself. Who didn't right? even get didn't the ball himself? The ball. He fucking missed the ball. So it's not like it's not like Gabriel was. You know, I mean, Gabriel, yeah, got you know, got put into a spot for a second, but he played the ball to Jorginho. It was about a few inches off. And this is the mistakes that we talk about that we just can't have happen. But but wait, yeah. See, Oregon Gunner, yeah. I've seen this defense this season. Even if even in even in the more tougher games this season, yeah, we didn't open up like that. Like we didn't give up, we didn't give up goals like that. There's an inquest right now. What really happened? Is it that the occasion, uh, you know, just kind of like bamboozled Arsenal, or is it that structurally something was wrong, or did we underestimate the threat of this Bayern Leverkusen side? All three, all the above, A, B, and C, bro. D, all the above. We, I think, we underestimated them. We went in there with a little bit of probably of a chip on our shoulder and Arteta trying to assure the lads that if you just press and press, everything will be okay. But, you know, that works like, like again, like I said before, on Crystal Palace, Wolves, Luton, et cetera, you know, you can do that over and over and probably get, you know, some nice three or four goal results out of that. But Bayern Munich, even though there's there's some still, it's to me it's like they have a few big names, but not big names. I wouldn't consider them just in the category of like Madrid and City and Barcelona for like name recognition. Harry Kane, Nabry, Sané. But those, you know, we knew Sané and Nabry were going to kill us on the mm. wings. And you know what? If, if if we get through this and we go against Madrid, it's going to be peak, bro. Because Rod, <laughs> Vinny Jr. <laughs> and Rodrigo, I mean, if, they, if you think Leroy Sané and Nabry are Gnabry are fast. Holy crap, bro. Our <sighs> fullbacks are done. Ben White has had a fabulous season. But if we get through Bayern Munich, if we if we face Madrid, it is going to be like nothing we've ever seen. Look at the game yesterday. Hmm. My wife was watching it with me yesterday. A little bit, watching the highlights. And she watched pretty much the whole Arsenal game too. And she said, just looking at Arsenal – and watching the Madrid, it's like two different teams. It's like one team mm. is fast-paced, confident, bing, bang, bosh, sh taking shots at 24 yards and putting them in top bins. When have we faced that? What team in the Premier League has scored from 24 yards and put it in? The one guy who scored from, from a distance was from Porto. Other than that, everybody's had to basically, you know, get some pens or dink them in because we have the best defense in the league. You know, but if we're facing teams that are going to start dropping bombs on us from 22, 23 yards outside the box, that's a whole well, other. Thing what's we the have need of your defense? What's it, but but again, is it that we're overhyping this defense? Is it that this defense hasn't really come up against no. formidable formidable players, sure. <laughs> all class players? Because uh, the, the way we were just torn open by, uh, you know, by this wingers yesterday, right. Canabri also, the way the, the license to roam in that our eighteen year oh. box, yeah, it was just completely awful man Leroy Sane the way he took on our defenders uh, th th that was a cause for worry mm -hmm. at every instant at every instant every attack every counter attack those guys had yesterday it, it was so dangerous they looked mm -hmm. on scoring at every chance that they had it looked everything it looked so dangerous 
yesterday, man. At the, right. To be very sincere, at the point when those two goals entered, at the point I thought 5 1 was going to be the tail. Oh, because we were yeah. looking, we were looking like, so thought, vulnerable. Be we were looking so vulnerable. And, and again, see, see here, yeah, in, in a competition where we're expecting class and we're expecting some certain kind of players to take us over the line, especially the captain of this football club, yet again, he gets another stinker. Right oh, oh, in a no. competition, right on the center stage, where uh, he should be doing the, you know, the opposite, where he should be getting players. us over the line. Matt right. Odegaard didn't create chances. Uh, I mean, he did lots of, you know, yes, I thought defensively he, he did lots he of defense. But again, we, we're not employing him as a defensive guy. Right. We're employing him as a, you know, as a creative spark. And, I mean, and, and creative mean? spark wasn't what he did yesterday. Or Guna, any ideas I, about Martin Odegaard and where he Yeah, I, I yesterday? think I have to disagree a, a tad on that, Tony. I know, okay. you know, and I know Od that's okay. I think Odegaard's been, you know, a topic of discussion and difference for everybody, right? I mean, there's times Leek Gunners absolutely slaughtered the kid. We've slaughtered him on your show, right? On our show. So it's it's okay to criticize, but I think, to be honest, out of, I mean, out of him, Saka Martinelli, who was the best? Odegaard. I mean, Saka got a great goal. All props to that. But did he do much between the goal and falling and then kicking Manuel Neuer? No, nothing. But Odegaard, I thought, tried to do everything, and I just don't. I don't think he was able to because also Rice had to play further back. Now, remember, Rice on the left side is our other attacking threat. But if Rice has to come back and defend, that leaves Odegaard just running vertically all over like he did, because they had yeah. their midfielders so pressed up high that 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 that's where Rice had to help Jorginho. Or else there would have been a massive gap between Rice and Odegaard up front with, you know, Saka, Martinelli, and Havertz, that there would have been a massive gap between that and Jorginho. And that's where Lemire and, um, oh God, what's the other guy's name? Uh, Goretzka. Goretzka. And that's why Thomas Tuchel had him set up. I mean, they, they, even the commentators think, like, it was, uh, I don't know, Henri or Jimmy Carragher saying, you know, positionally, Bayern Munich are some of the best. Yeah, positionally, in, in yeah, that, position, you know, you, you you're in a balance. You're you're off balance where you you know you lose the ball, they're there. You miss pass yeah. a play, a, you misplace a pass, they're there, right? It's not again. It's not Luton where they're all just sitting back, like waiting for you to do something. No way for you back, to do something. But they're not like like off you. Like, once you get the ball, bam, they're right there. Because they positionally cover the pitch, like, expertly. But again, yeah, this, this says a lot. This says a lot about this says a lot about this Bayern Munich team, yeah. Uh, because I actually thought that they would come down to the Emirates, yeah. They would sense the environment and see that they, they have no spectators. Right. Uh, and that was an advantage Arsenal had that I thought well, that would right. really, really exploit. But we right. didn't exploit that. We didn't use our fans uh, uh, you know, and our spectators as an armory that we had. Right. Uh, you know, so definitely... The way they set up, they set up to come and stifle us and and have a go at us because every like every attack, yeah, mind you, they defended properly yesterday. Because yeah. if if that was another team, maybe they will be conceding like maybe three, four. Yesterday, also, yeah, they defended Dyer, properly too. Eric Dyer is no good, but he's still not. You know, he's a veteran in the game. He he knows positionally where to be, even though he's not mm. someone we obviously rate because of obvious reasons, but. You know, but Mateus DeLitt is a top, top defender, bro. I mean, he's probably one of the top 20 in the world, top 15. He's got to be, you know. And, and, and there's no, no mugs, bro. There are no mugs. No. It's it's just I, I don't know I think even me too personally I think I slightly underrated uh, uh, the challenge uh, of Bayern Munich. I did. Uh, you know they, they really surprised me yesterday because I've not seen this form in the German Bundesliga because I was really really hoping to actually see uh, uh, I, I was really hoping that their form in the German Bundesliga would translate into uh, uh, you know what they're doing right now but right. 
that, that at all, man. They, they just became a different right. team right. yesterday. Right. Something right. different from what right. I've been right. watching right. in the German Bundesliga. Yeah, yeah. Goretzka right. turned into a demon. He, he, like he was running right. everywhere. I was yeah. like, is this Goretzka that's having inconsistencies yeah. in his play in the Bundesliga? And right now, it looks like <laughs> it's fighting. I, I don't know. It's, right. it's just, I agree. I agree, and and that's like something that you know, I kind of yes, you know, yes. I think that's as, as as football fans we we sort of learn over time is that the Champions League or let's say the Europa League, <clears throat> say even the FA Cup, is a completely different thing than the league, right? Mm -hmm. the, I mean, yeah. especially the Champions League. I would say you have to set up completely different because, and it, 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 you know, the funny thing is football heritage. Yeah, I get that. But it's a different team throughout the seasons, right? Like we're obviously not facing Definitely. the Bayern Munich of Lewandowski and you know and, and and Robin and Frank Ribery and those guys who were absolute demons. But the players they have are definitely equal to that quality. That's just a different name on the back of the mm. shirt, right? And so you got Leroy Sané, top player, Man City, top player, mm. Man United. He was top. Who? Mm. Where was he at before City? Leverkusen or somewhere? Or, no, not Dortmund. I forget where he was at before City, the German club. But, um, you know, it's there's certain players in certain moments. And, you know, the yeah. big moment for me was towards the end of the game when Saka kicked Neuer. If he would have just sort of controlled the ball more, I think he would have. Uh, um, yeah. And that, but that comes from pressure. That comes from pressure in the moment. It comes from age because he's also the youngest, one of the younger kids in the squad. And it comes from yeah. You know, and it's a, we've, we've put a ton of pressure on this kid, but at those moments, he needs to perform, bro. He those needs to perform. I'm, I'm yeah. not buying. I'm not buying all this narrative from the, from the media. Not, he he, he ought to be I mean, burying that kind of chances. But, but, but he fluffed his you know, lines. He fluffed his lines, pure and simple. And this is, and it's, you know, I would say the same thing against if it was Luton or Sheffield. You know, but this mm. there's bigger stakes in this right now, right? I mean, if we're up four nil against Luton and he does that, it's not a big deal. But it's two two at home in the 89th minute. The the preciseness just wasn't there <laughs> yesterday from everyone. No it's one was exactly. passing. Even I mean, that Ben White chant. Even Ben White's yeah. chance. How about yeah, that, man? That, bro, one on one. I don't yeah. want to criticize Ben White, man, but but brother, we have to talk about that, man. Yeah. Oh my face. god. Face to face with the with the Barmanic post, yeah. You, you, bro, you, you should be hitting the target. He just split it straight at the goalkeeper. Yeah. Like chances like that. And remember, it was when they lost that chance that that spark just came immediately. And and, yeah. and 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 they just went to score a goal. So you know that we have to take our chances when they come. But again, look at what um DJ Crane says here. Very important stuff down there. Uh, shout out to Mama Flossie who is down here with us, uh, moderator in the house. Shout out to uh, uh, Drew Gunners, my brother, my friend too. Big up to you, DJ Crane. Our guy is also down here. Big up to you, DJ Crane. Uh, DJ Crane says something. Here. He says, and also Luke James. Big up to Luke James. I'm not the real one out here. Um, DJ Crane says something here. Um, are good. He says they take turns. In my opinion, Martinelli is off form. Saka is doing his disrespecting act. So other guard looks good. Next week, who knows? Martinelli. Gabriel Martinelli. Not his season, bro. See, man. Um, Martinelli has been dropping yeah. stinkers like... Um, as if his name is Mr. Stinkers. <laughs> to be very <laughs> sincere with you. He's been dropping lots of stinkers. And it welled up into a crescendo yesterday. Mm. It stank up the room. I don't know if it was the, the kind of structure... Uh, to which make or, or formation or, or or the way Mikel Arteta wanted to play. Maybe he wanted to get the ball across more to Bukhar Saka. Uh, you know, probably maybe he sensed that Bukhar Saka will be more dangerous. But again, Martinelli was doing nothing. It was... Yeah. I, I, I count that many times. He was just One walking shot. and... He was just walking and, you know, just striding along that left-hand side, doing nothing. The ball wasn't getting across to him. In the first in the first 
five, six minutes, he tried to impose himself on the game. Right. But after the after the tenth minute, everything just went cold. Oh, he yeah. completely disappeared from the picture. Argunguna, is it that next season we should start looking for a replacement for Martin uh, for Martinelli? Or do you think that this kid is is still good enough to be in this football club? Because I'm getting impatient with him. Yeah, I, I'm getting impatient too. I bought his shirt last year with the big number 11 on the back. So I hope my $110 isn't thrown away in one season. Um, but he's just had, I think he's just had a, a really bad season. I think he's been found out a bit. Um, yesterday, I think he was playing too wide. I think the yeah. game was was calling to have a little more, you know, be a little more compact. If you look at Trossard's goal, he drifts way in the middle when Jesus makes that incredible run and lets the ball off. Trossard's in the middle of the 18-yard box, whereas mm. Martinelli would be further out, right? He mm. would be further away. He would be further outside the 18-yard box. In that situation, the way the passage of play worked, right, Jesus got the ball, did a, some great dribbling, laid it off with, to Trossard, who basically buried it right in front of the uh, penalty spot. But my point is, is Trussard was in the middle of the box, right? Yeah. And that's, I think, positionally-wise, there's still a lot to learn that Martinelli needs, a lot more to learn Martinelli needs, you know, to learn a lot more. Um, I think he's, there's some, I think he can actually learn from Trussard a bit. You know, he's about four year, five years older than Martinelli. And I think Trussard needs to start more with what he's been displaying. He's come on as an impact player. So I kind of see... <laughs> Why he's starting Martinelli, not Trussard. If you start Trussard, he doesn't produce anything in the 60, 65 minutes. Then you bring Martinelli on, who's really not producing anything. You see my point, right? So, and we know that Trussard isn't the best starter in, in the Prem, but there was something to be called for yesterday um, for him to start. I, you know, I just, I, I feel that, He's, he's really made a stamp on the team because he scored. I mean, he scored the goal against Porto. I mean. He scored, he scored I mean. Porto going with Chelsea. I mean. I mean, why can't he start? Starting, though, it's like why can't he, he start? He started. And I think that's the dilemma Arteta has. Is like, I want to start the guy because we know what he can really do. We know what he brings. He's in front of goal. He's, he's <laughs> phenomenal. Should Mikel Arteta take part of the blame for our draw yesterday? Should he take part of the blame? Yes. And because I, want to give you that. I, I think so. I think so because you scored in the 11th minute. You smell blood. I don't know why. To me, we took the foot off the pedal yesterday after we scored that goal. I know Ben yeah. White had a chance after that. I know, you know, we may have had two or three chances after that. But to be honest, we, we took our foot off the gas pedal yesterday and we never got out of second gear. It mm. looked slow. It looked lethargic. The pass, look how many times I've talked. The passings weren't connecting. The pass to yeah. I mean, there was one of Trossard towards the end that kind of went out of his foot and out of bounds. It was too, oh. it was hit too softly. The one, the Gabriel <laughs> pass to Jorginho that he missed that led to the goal. The pass that Zinchenko missed from Sane when he played a 30 yarder, you know, from the right side into the middle and he stretched his leg out and missed it. I mean, it's just those kinds of things is what killed us yesterday. And exactly. Dan Rea can't close his legs. I mean, he can't oh, close shit. his leg. I thought he made that save against Coleman. I look at the replay, and it's off the post through his fucking legs. Exa like, exactly what shit. I wanted to say. It went through his legs. The ball, the uh, someone not megged yeah. him. It hit the post, and it came back. It bounced out back. So I, I don't know. Even David Raya, who who's kept the most clean sheets in the league this season, out out here in the Champions League, he's looking vulnerable. And he was so vulnerable yesterday, man. Oh, you yeah, could see the inexperience. Awesome. My brother, man, he was out of his it was out of his 18-year box. And mm -hmm. in, in, oh my days. The way he did it, yeah. He, he did it without class. Like, see, I've seen goalkeepers, yeah, that even come out, yeah, you know, out of that 18-year box. But it's for a reason. There was no reason in the build up to that goal, to their first goal. There was no reason why it should be there in the first place. You're not playing against Luton. You're playing against the, 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 the so called German giant, yeah? The, the, why would you just, just, oh my days. Yeah. It was just so confusing yesterday. 
I, like I, I didn't know who to really hold responsible than to just say Mikel Arteta, um, uh, you know, maybe in his subs, yeah, or structurally who should start the who should have started the game. Maybe he missed one or th- one or two things. Uh, maybe Thomas Partey should have been there uh, because I, I thought oh, that yeah, yeah. in that game against Luton, he built up a, a, a match fitness. Why didn't he start in place of Jorginho, who we all know that, you know, he's not the youngest guy in the midfield, right? right? He's like, not he the youngest guy. He can't, he can't do intensive games back to back. Back to back, you know, like, give him a rest. Bring in, uh, uh, bring in Thomas Partey. Uh, yeah, and um, well, if or play Yassin, right there, bring in ESR on the again. left. You know, you can play exactly. right with Virginia. If Tomiyasu is left. injured, leave him out of the bench. Right, right. If Tomiyasu yeah, is I injured, know. leave him outside the bench. I because we as fans don't know if he's injured. We're now just right. speculating that he's injured. That's why I didn't come in. Because if it's okay to play, why didn't you bring in Tomiyasu down there in the first place in place of Zinchenko? He wanted to invert Zinchenko, thinking James Zinchenko <laughs> is going to pull off this miracle pass, you know, and it was all going to be okay. And it's just not okay. I mean, we've seen that we've struggled with Zinchenko in the midfield, in, in the squad this season. Exactly. You know, I mean, there's evidence to, to support that. And you're right. Why bring Tommy Asu from on the bench just to sit there? It makes no sense. We're it all makes no sense. And he's going to play, and he puts the fucking rat bastard Bart Simpson in there, who just <laughs> you cannot defend. I'm sorry. He just cannot defend. I don't know. You know, I, I, I don't know what our tennis season, but I know why he's here, and I know why Jesus is here. It's because they were security blankets when he first got the job. He needed a couple of players he could get on the cheap, essentially, from City. Big ups, Darren. Yeah. Believe in him, that he had experience working with, that he could bring in and feel comfortable, you know, having some backup with the squad, right? If he's given instructions to people in the squad, you want to have two or three players that have your back. But now that that security blanket's gone, you know, it's like, mm. hey, Seuss is one, too. They're showing who they really are. And I thought we played better with hey, Seuss up there. I would have... Maybe maybe put Jesus in for Havertz a lot earlier, um, you know. And Havertz didn't do German things against the Germans. And by the way, their center backs aren't even German, so it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at the end of <laughs> the day. So it was just shocking play. Martin Odegaard, yeah, I, I hear you. Yeah, he helped in the defense, but that's not his job. His job is to enforce, is to create chances. I didn't yeah, see clean, clean, clear cut chances uh, produced by Odegaard yesterday. Martinelli bereft of ideas. That's a minus one. He needs to improve. And if he can't improve right now, then why can't we just start Trossard from the get go? I, I know he has a bad start, but why don't we throw him out there? Because he's the one that, that seems to get the goals these days. And he's our most technically gifted player, apart from Emmy Smith Rowe, which takes me to another topic. Emmy Smith Rowe is in that is in that bench, and we can't use him. At least that game was crying out for a speedster who could get us into space, those pocket spaces, get into those spaces, dribble one, dribble two, cause problems, cause pandemonium in the head of in the heads of those German uh, uh, players yesterday, and at least uh, get us something, create a spark, create magic. But I agree. He's on the bench. You can't use him. What does this guy have to do to get a sniff in this team? Yeah. He... Yeah, it's 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 because Arteta just simply doesn't rate him. You know, I, it's got to be that. I don't know what it could be because my, my line of thinking is if it's not working out for Havertz, you know, can you bring Jesus on? Yes. But I've been shouting for it before. I know Martinelli, we just talked about, isn't having the best season. Put him up front. Uh, 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 I'm not satisfied with that answer, man. Like, this guy got us over the line against Luton. Mm. He helped us out against Luton. Yeah. Without him, we wouldn't have won that game. Like, like, what else do you want him to do? Like, I, I know. what should he do? Like, what should he do? Like, aren't we judging players based on uh, based on how they play, uh, their output, what they give to us, and then in his last game, what he did in that Luton game, and you know he's just coming back from injury. 
he gave his all. Without him, we're not winning those that game against Luton. What does he have to do again to kind of like to, to kind of gain that, like to make a name for himself in this Mikalateta world? Like, what does he have to do again? I don't know. You you would think that after his good display against Luton that he would you know get get a shot maybe at all. But then again, is Neville Smith Rowe we want to see someone brought on in the 85th minute? At this point, yes. But at other points, no, because he's done that before and it hasn't had any impact. And the thing is, Troussard is you, if you play, if you start him and play him, let's say for 65 minutes, right? Who is the impact player to bring on? Besides ESR. If you have Mark Nelly on the bench, that would be the only one I could think of. And he's having a shit season. You know, is ESR because it ain't Fabio Vieira, it's not El Nenny. You know, I mean, so Jorginho goes off, you rotate Rice from left to, you know, CDM, and you bring a left midfielder off. We don't want Kai Havertz there. We don't want Trossard there. ESR is the only option, and he refuses to play him. He could have, he could have wrote, he could have taken Jorginho out, rotated Rice into the seat, into the sixth spot. Yeah. And yeah, Rodney is going to play on the left and be the box to box while Odegaard was the attacking man. Or bring him <laughs> on for Odegaard. I, I mean, or he could remove Odegaard, Odegaard because Odegaard, Odegaard was doing nothing. And they, and I, I, I don't know why he, he did fall. nothing. It was clear he did nothing in that game. He did nothing. I, I uh, hear you about the I defensive aspect. Is there, there to create? Is there to create? He did nothing. Why not yeah. throw in an ESR? Yeah. Look at yeah. Darren. Look at what Darren Sullivan says here. Shout out to Darren, man. You know, uh, okay. Darren says it's clear as day. Ateta has us tactically all set up wrong. Villa played the same as Ban. Uh, as Ban, uh, watch them pass forward, find feet in two, three movement. Not sideways football. Uh, see, yeah, yesterday, yeah, I really saw this Bayern Munich team cut through our defense with ease. That was the problem right. for me. The ease with which they, they just cut through our midfield, cut through our defense. And this defense is the defense that has been good almost all season. So for them to just come in and do that to us away right. from home without home fans. It, it, it shocked me, man. It shocked me. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I feel pretty well. I, I, I blame that because of Jorginho and his 32-year-old legs. He and, and DJ Crane hit the nail on the head. He can't play mm. intensive game after intensive game, bro. He's, it's done. He's It's done. You know, he's just kind of done. Yeah. I mean, we're going to look at, what, a one-year contract extension? If that, yeah, I know. And you know, and I don't think Thomas Party is a hundred percent match fit. He got out there and got a yellow card in the first three minutes. No, 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 that yellow, no, that yellow. See, that yellow card was to save us, man. <laughs> he was going yeah. straight through. Oh, it's okay for the team. <laughs> right, but I mean, well, still, I mean, to be put in that position, though, like he shouldn't have to have to do that in the first for five seconds, ten, you know, five minutes. He's out on the pitch. It's like he was out there to calm things down, right? Mm. You're and you're right. If he doesn't. Do that professional foul, they're already true. And that's a they're bigger problem. True. Yeah, I thought Saliba and Gabriel didn't have their best game, right? They they just obviously did not have their best game. They they're unfortunately the ones that I can look at and say, Yeah, it's because of you guys that, that the goals will score. And you know, and I'm I'm not gonna try to be Mr. Sunshine, but if the other thing is too, is that if they don't make those mistakes, we win two nil. Right. If it, if we don't make those mistakes, it's a two nil game, and we're it's having a two nil game conversation. Different right? conversation. So <laughs> it, it, it wasn't mistake free football on both sides. On, the, on both sides. I mean, Bayern Munich were making mistakes too. I mean, they couldn't get the ball out of their defense for a while, and that was because our pressing it at times was 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 pretty good. You could see there was something. There. It was pretty good, but, but it, it wasn't was sustained. Consistent. Right, it wasn't sustained. That's it the wasn't problem. sustained. And, and we're always dropping wasn't back we were after that. Confused and lost. It's like we 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 were good when we were pressing, right? You could see something, but once the press wasn't working, we had no clue what we were doing, and that's the worrying part. And that's the part like Darren's talking about with Villa is that once that press breaks down and, and yeah. some play gets through, we fucking scramble like kids <sighs> trying to recover and. 
pointing fingers and you go here and you go there. It's just, it's back to old Arsenal defense. It's back to old Arsenal. Oregon Guinea. We hit a we Oregon Guinea. And they end up scoring. And this Barca game looks intense. 3 2 Barca. Oregon Guinea. 3 2 Barca. Uh, shout out to Hollywood Rock. See ya. Uh, the one that made me completely mad yesterday. David Raya passes the ball and then Magalesh picks up the ball. Oh, my days. I gave him a three, I think a four yesterday in the ratings. What is good? You have to hold your legs, bro. I mean, Jesus Christ. This is what is good. Your right leg hat, your right knee is going to has to touch the ground. Like, he just barely goes like that. Like, jump on him, knock the defender over. Jump but, on the ball. But, but again, but again, how can a defender, yeah, grab the ball from like? You know, I, I'm and trying to look for words to, to uh, I'm, I'm trying to look for words to describe this type of anomalies in our 18-year box yesterday. The kind mm -hmm. of atrocious defending we had yesterday. Words, see, I can't, I can't find the clear words. To really utter what garbage we saw there yesterday, it was a it's calamity, man. And, and it happens, it happens that it happens that it's the, it's the guys that have gotten us over the line this season, and our most trusted assets down there are the ones that committed these crimes yesterday. What was Magalis thinking yesterday? Picking the ball, that, like I don't know, <sighs> I don't know. And that's the thing; he just put more pressure. On Gabrielle because he shortened the distance that Kane would have to run around and get the ball. Like if David Ray would just stayed in his box, you know, Gabrielle probably maybe could have given a look, put his back to Kane, and played a decent ball back to him. But, the, the, but, some, but again, is it? But again, is a professional footballer. You know the rules. Whether you, it doesn't matter how you get the ball. You shouldn't be touching the ball. It's it, like it, it's a no-brainer. I, I get you when you, but he shouldn't be touching the ball. It's a normal rules. Yeah. No. I, uh, <laughs> Why would you touch? <laughs> this I, don't is, I, I don't understand it. I don't know. I don't know what went what? on yesterday. I mean, and this is where the mentality, and, and I know fans long line. Long life fans like Darren get so upset. It's like we do so well yeah, when we course. have the big name comes to town like Byron Munich, and it's like we are complete fucking clowns. Like we completely mm. lose what we've done. We lose all sense of of space and time, and we make stupid, stupid mistakes. And that's why I'm upset. We lose our heads. I'm pissed off. It's you know we it's lose just, our heads. Like, it's because oh, it's Bayern Munich. And everyone's shook and scared. It's like that's the, one of the worst Bayern Munich teams to been around in the last five years. But they're but, still but again, very, very good. And that's but, but, but again, but again, how, how can you say that we're scared? But again, Oregon Gunnar, is it that we were scared of Bayern Munich? Because we 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 played City at the Etihad. It doesn't get better than that. We played the European champions at the Etihad, and they even conceded a goal. We, we subjected them to just a shot on goal. And that was an Ake handball to even get it across, uh, uh, you know, as a shot on goal. What are we talking about here? Why why would we be bamboozled and get our, in our feelings in the moment against Bayern Munich? A team that is not even topping their table in the German Bundesliga. Like, like let's put this into perspective. Liverpool, who I feel are more lethal than Bayern Munich this season. We beat them 3-1 at home on that same ground. Right. With Liverpool fans down there. So yeah. what's the difference wow. with Bayern Munich at that? I, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to make sense of everything and, and right. pinpoint these things right. where right. where the problems came from. But I, I can't really put my hands where of course the defenders yeah but I think it was more of a structural problem and tactical yeah. issue that well, I don't know I don't know what to pinpoint I, what the I, problem I really it, was I think it's what Darren said here about concentration and nerves mm. you know and but but that to me that that hasn't as long as I've been following Arsenal that hasn't really left the club it's like how many I mean how many times have we seen this before we've seen this multiple times this is we've seen this multiple new. times man you know and and Drew said it 
in the chat as well. If you if we were to play them and really open attack and really push, 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 we would have and press them. them. Drew was saying it try you, bro, We took our foot off the gas after that first goal. It was visibly yeah. noticeable. And they said, cool. They set up, they spread the pitch wide, they let they, you know, we tried to play balls in the midfield and they just nope. You know, mm-hmm. Gretzka just said no, 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 no. And they would just kick it back. How many times do we have to play it back? We had to play it back over and over and over. How many times did I mean it was so open at times Saliba was dribbling the ball all into the final third just to lose it? Like just pass it. Like you're dribbling the ball, you're leaving the center wide open. And well, he is right. Ben White should have scored. If he scores that goal, it's a whole different game. I, mean, I don't I understand. Pound of four or five mil. We did something different yesterday. I, I still can't pinpoint it. But see, yeah. Uh, but see, let's move further. Uh, Darren says, yeah, Raya was off his head coming out of goal for the first one, putting Gabriel under yeah. pressure. Hmm. I agree with you. Drew, my guy and my friend, says, yeah, he says, I said before the game started, if we press Bayern, they will become shaky. And I said, if we allow them to play, they will punish us. True. That that was exactly what happened. Oregon Guna says, yeah, that's what happened, Drew. <laughs> exactly, man. A bag of my guy, of course. Me and bag of will be doing the watch along to the end of the season. That's my brother. That there, bag of one of the first people to come down here and help me out on this channel. And he says, yeah, big up, Stoney. He has something to say down here. Baka crossing is unreal. Why the hell can't Arsenal cross like Baka? The chances and yesterday I set pieces. Yeah, Declan Rice was supposed to be on on those corner kicks. Yeah, it took mm-hmm. some of them. He fluffed his lines in some free kicks. Uh, there was some free kick he just ballooned away. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, instead of crossing it into where the heads are, the corner kicks uh, weren't effective. What's happening to our set pieces? We used uh-huh. to be the best set piece uh, a team. In the, we're still the best set piece team in the league, but. Uh, you know that mojo seemed to have disappeared. Uh, you know, along with the you know with the passing weeks, what, what's happening in Oregon? Uh, I just think that Gabriel's not getting the positions that he needs to be in, and the ball's not delivering as flat as it needs to be. So those corner kicks mm-hmm. were high and wild. The ball needs to go up a bit. It needs to arc because and, Malia. Then it, and then it needs to flatten out as it comes into the box. You know, the corner kicks aren't big arcs in the air. <laughs> they have to flatten out. Right, once they, they have to the flatten, apex, out. They flatten out, right? And we just can't seem to do that yesterday. Um, some of the balls, too, like Zinchenko was playing overhead balls that were over hit over and over. You know, I don't know. The whole thing yesterday, I'm, I'm serious, Tony. The whole thing was, I think a lot of it was the nerves of facing a big club, right? And <laughs> the way Byron Munich positioned themselves on the pitch, they were on in. The pitch. They were in the specific gaps they needed to be in to soak up the pressure and then to counter. Mm. You know, like they mm. said, they weren't low blocking. They they blocked just exactly how they needed to, which they expanded exactly. the field out and they played the balls on the wings like we expected them to do. But mm. you know, Ben White's a good Ben White to me is like a really good player. But of course, if yeah. he has to come up against Vinny Jr., it's it's not even close. It's, it's not, not. It's not it's close, close, man. We shouldn't even be talking about Real Madrid. We shouldn't even be talking about Real Madrid. We're, we're still far. We're still far, far away from yesterday. Proved to me that we're still. You know, I, I try to hype the team, get behind the team, but the team, man, we're still far, far, far behind. To be very truthful, we're still far, far, far behind. Uh, you know. If you compare us to these European teams, we're far, far, far behind. We struggle a lot, you know, against managers of European descent, not really of, you know, of, of at least that play typical European football. That Mikel Arteta, he, he struggles with it. He struggles with it. You know, and we struggle with it, you know, uh, you know, as a team. And it doesn't matter whether the team plays anti-football like Potter. Mm-hmm. They stifled us. It doesn't matter if they come out to play like Bayern did yesterday. They right. still better us one way or the other. So it doesn't really matter if one comes out with anti-football and one comes to play football. We still 
you know, our defense was broken yesterday. Our defense was broken against Porto also. So, you know, I don't know. Probably Mikel Arteta should just fix up, uh, you know, in Europe. Uh, you know, he, he just has to fix up. But again, talking about scoring of goals, confidence levels, and in our feelings, we're heading back down there to the Allianz Arena. You know, this is a place where we've been burnt alive, yeah? We've been burnt down there, yeah? Wow. Crucified down there. We've been put on <laughs> boiling hot water down Stop. there, yeah? And, yeah. Uh, bro, we've been left out there to dry. See, do you think that's another beating and maiming in the heart of Germany? Yes. We're, we're not going to win there. If we you play like so? we did yesterday, there's no fucking way we're going to win there. And I'm sorry to demonetize your screen. No, no. Um, but no problem. I, I don't. I don't see it. They again position. They knew where to be on the pitch. Like it's and it's like you don't have to be, you know, Ronaldo and Messi to be to know where to be on a football pitch and know where to be when the ball is. You know, you know what I mean. I, I, if I'm defending, I'm here, but I'm not putting myself. You know, so far back, let's say. Yeah. I'm defending yeah. from, they're defending from the midfield, is what they did. They didn't play yeah. a blow block. They weren't, you know, they, like I said, they spread the pitch out wide and Ooh. they just are in spots where if, even if Odegaard receives the ball, he's got to receive it with his back to goal. Saka gets the ball, his back's to goal. Martinelli gets the ball, his back's to goal. And that's exactly. what Bayern really wanted. One on one, we smoked him a lot of times. It's like Sane was smoking Kiwi, or that's why he got pulled. It made sense. That subs, I mean, I would have put Trent, uh, Tommy in and said Zinchenko, but pulling off keyboard made sense because that was going to be a long second half for him. A oh, very long one, man. He was completely right? roasted he was down there, man. Yeah. I wonder how that matchup would look like in Germany. Oh, He's going to be crucified on the stake. <laughs> Don't give me. Let's not think <laughs> about Allianz that. Arena. Yeah, it's going to be like a steak kebab or something. Um, it's just, you know, they, again, they positioned themselves and were patient. That's the other thing we need to talk about, how patient they were. They got the ball. They, they defended patiently, waited for us to make a mistake. Bing, bang, bash. They were up the pitch in three or four passes. Hmm. I dare say there's like a two, three touch passes. They were already in our attacking third. And I, we don't see that in the Premier League much. We don't, you know, the teams we beat, I should say. Maybe you'll see it, you know, with the better teams, City, Liverpool. Obviously, McAllister can play great passes, Rodri, Foden, et cetera. But with the bulk of the Premier League teams, it's just pace and power. It's like if you can catch them and knock them over, great. And it's not mm. so much positioning, it's just really pace and power. With Bayern Munich, it's controlled chess. It's chess. Yeah. It ain't fucking checkers, bro. It's chess. It's how you position your pawns, your bishops, your kings, your queens, your knights. How do you put them on the checkerboard on the on the checkerboard pitch, right? And that's what Thomas Tuchel did. Every time we attacked, they would just drop back. They wouldn't go into a frenzy like we did. Mm. We go into a complete fucking mental breakdown frenzy on any counterattack. It can be Luton. Their counterattack. Look, they put three goals in on us on their counterattacks. Right? Oh, our counterattack dude. defensively, our minds counterattack is absolutely shit. And that was proved yesterday. When it when the pressing doesn't work and the ball gets loose and, and there's a decent two or three decent players that know what to do and can have vision of the pitch, we're done. We go into chaos mode. You know, everybody starts running right, around. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's just, it's a joke. It's like a circus. Dallas, see, DVS, yeah. What should change? What should change in that second leg, uh, at, you know, when we face this Bavarian? Um, I don't think that's a game for Jorginho, number one. Unfortunately, I think it's going to have to be Rice in front of the back four, which means he's going to be less of an attacking threat as a box-to-box. -box. But that's what's got to happen. They are going to throw everything at us, bro. They're going to want to win that three or four or nothing. I'm telling you, this is the <laughs> only competition dude. they're in. They, they're off the Pokal. They lost that. They lost the league, right? This, the Bundesliga is gone. This is the only real competition they have, which is more oh impetus for them dude. to win. And, and, and I'm telling you, bro, we are not going to beat them there. I just don't see it. 
If we do, it will be, I mean, if we beat them there, the stars. That will be a miracle. That will be a miracle. Because my be a miracle. Was that go there without a 3-0 win, which we needed yesterday, without those three goals, a 2-0 win, even if Ben White scored that one, if Saka scored that one, let's say, or Ben White scored that one, and it was 2-0, let's just, for instance, say that, for example. I still don't think that's enough to go there. I, I, my thing from day one when we drew them was we need three goals at home. We minimum. need three goals at home. We need minimum. three goals at home minimum. Because they're going to go there and they're going to fucking pound us, bro. And we're, we're oh going to be pressed God. like we haven't been pressed yet. City didn't press us. They couldn't. They couldn't. They, but, they couldn't. but again, Literally, but again, see, Leroy Sané was hacked off in that half, yeah. Uh, right. In the second half, Gnabry had injury problems. He had to be hacked off. Do you think injuries and suspension might also affect this Bayern Munich team? Let's don't get that twisted here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, injuries yeah. might have to play a role because Alfonso Davis is missing next match. He's not going to be down there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if 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 what we saw on the pitch was anything to go by, Gnabry wouldn't be there because he looks injured. Uh, yeah. You know, of course they could shoot him some shots, but. We all know that he won't get up to speed. He will still 80, be injured fans, in a way. 80,000 fans at the Allianz Arena. It holds 80,000. <sighs> Man. <laughs> you just have know. to stick that one in there, right? <laughs> I, I mean, it's this is why this why this game, I mean, we've said it a hundred times. Oh, this is the most important game of the season. This is the most important game of the season. Yesterday was the most important game of the season. We had to win mm. that game 3 0 or more. Mm. Um, see watch? what Darren. Yeah. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. Okay. Uh, see what Darren said. He says, I'm sorry, Bill. Uh, Bill uh, Saliba must take some blame for number two. He should have stopped Sane and Kivio. Got spun around like the victim of a Kung Fu game. <laughs> Darren has gone. Darren has gone kung fu no down here, man. <laughs> Any, right. you know, these mistakes. But it's but there's right. It's these mistakes that will keep us from lifting a trophy. Hmm. It's these mistakes that Jorginho can't. You know, Gabriel's under pressure. Pass Jorginho. Gio can't trap the ball because he's just <sighs> inches off. Right. Zinchenko can't trap a ball when it's being passed through from Sane to the middle of the midfield. He stretches a leg out because the ball is behind him. Like, where? What, what is that? Like, it, there's just there. Yesterday, there was just no awareness. Like, we just weren't no awareness. We just weren't there yesterday. And it's great that we t- and it is great that we tied it up. If we got there with two one, I mean, that'd be awful. At least two two. That'd I be mean, awful, man. It gives us somewhat of a lifeline, right? <laughs> if we go there, win one nil. My God, fantastic. If we go there and win two one, fantastic. But I'm I'm looking at four nil, bro. I'm looking oh, at four nil Bayern Munich. I just so don't you mean see so it. you mean so you mean there's no way we can structurally and tactically gain the advantage over Thomas Tuchel down there, even with the suspensions and clearly and obviously the injuries that will that will blight that team at the time. Because right. mind you, they still have to play this weekend. Out. Definitely, they still... Alfonso Davis no. and Tuchel are the only two that are out. I think there's also fitness issues to Leroy Sane. If not, why did he leave? Because, yeah, he was absolutely roasting our players down there, man. So there's maybe an injury worry for him also. And mind you, Sane was also injured before. He was pronounced injured even before this matchup. So, right. you know, and maybe he's surprise, surprise there he was in the now. starting lineup. <laughs> I, right. I thought Sonny was... <laughs> I know. I saw the starting lineup. like, oh, I guess he's not injured. Well, that sucks. Because I really thought... I thought Nabry was injured. I thought uh, Sonny was going to be injured. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but... Mm-hmm. It can happen that way. And they're, you know... Um, they're not the Bayern Munich, obviously, that they have been over the last uh, 10 years. Mm-hmm. But it's just... It's sort of like... They just know, bro, they just know where to be. Like, mm. and again, when the if we when we go there and the pressing game doesn't work, what's our tennis plan B? What's been his plan B all season? The plan B I saw was at City, right? Nil nil, defensive work. No, no. Shut, shut the we place down. Shut the place down. 
And but if we do that at Allianz, I just don't think that's sustainable there. I don't I think mean, it's enough. Find a way it's not that, enough. Though. We need yeah, something more. Yeah. We need something more. We need Martinelli. The, if we it was you, would you would you would you put um would you put Jury and Timber in the firing line and put him down there in, in the Ali and Zariena? No. He is not not for this. That bro, that's like throwing me in there. <laughs> I mean, I know you're a Timber, but I haven't played football in years. He hasn't played in months. I know he's training. But I mean, really? Really? You're gonna, this poor kid who sat out all season is going to be in the biggest game of Arsenal's season, so essentially. No. Yeah, because because Kizia has been absolutely right. roasted down there, yeah? Absolutely roasted. I, mean, I don't trust – I don't trust Sichenko. Uh, that, that maybe Tommy is okay. injured. How well, about that? Here's what you do. My hair's a mess. Here's what you do. You play a 3-4-3. Three, three. You play Saliba, Gabriel, and White. 3-4-3 three, three at Allianz Arena? 3-4-3 at Allianz Arena? It's the same thing. If Zinchenko's inverted, it's the same thing. Right? If Zinchenko's <sighs> inverted, it's a 3-4-3. Three, three. Oh my Am God, I wrong? <laughs> I, mean, you know, I know offensively, offensively we turn into a three four three. Defensively, we go into a four four one one. Right, Odegaard yeah. is the right. So we our formation yeah. is different defensively than it is offensively. Okay, so with the, if you invert a defender, you're a three four three squad. And so like I'm saying, well, what like I've said before, well, fuck the whole inverted step. Just make it three four three. And I don't like that formation particularly, but if that's what's going to work to win us games, is who, but who's the fourth midfielder? Emerald Smith Rowe. Put him wide out on the left. Yeah, yeah because a midfielder, but see, yeah, again, yeah, we need to fight fire with fire because we can't be having someone like Emmy Smith Rowe who could get into space, who could dribble here and there, who could get to some certain degree ahead progressively. And um, I think Gabriel Jesus will come in handy for that one because he's that kind of player that has one or right. two trickery here and there. And you can see when he came when he came on in the second half, you could see it was when he passed the ball. You know, Trossard got it, and and right. you saw right. what happened from there. So you know, we need these players with a little bit of trickery who could come in down there and and and, and just you know just conjure magic. Because if we play the same way we played yesterday. We are going to be burnt at the stake in Allianz Arena. It's going to be hot. See, yeah, it's going to be a horrible show down there. Yeah, I don't care how bad their season has looked. The, those guys are going to make us look like clowns down there at Germany. And, and I just pray that these players have a little bit of shame. Yeah, have a little bit of shame to just come out of their shell and cut away the defensive mistakes and just go head on with these guys. See, that uh, 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 Darren, Oregon Gunner, uh, 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 Drew Gunners, we have to go there and play these guys and win. Uh, because yeah. if we're thinking of going to penalties, <laughs> even before we get to the penalties, these guys will smoke us up. They will smoke us up. I don't trust the Arsenal defence against Sane. I don't trust them oh. against Gnabry. Right now, with what I saw, Look, right. Yesterday in our home, not talk of away in 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 yeah. our in our barbecue center, the but they barbecue us down there every time we go there. <laughs> prediction for that. The prediction for that matchup. Of course, oh, Darren man. is saying is he, Darren says he sees us having a chance. Am I correct, Darren? <laughs> okay, Darren says here yeah, it will be a different game out there. We have a chance, but are likely to get beat. Yeah. The, 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 see, do you see a chance there? Really? I think there's always a do chance. Do you see a chance? chance? Well, yeah. I mean, Porto won it in 2004 or 2002. <laughs> I mean, the Champions League is the chances, right? Oregon, Oregon, Oregon Gunner, are you, are you trolling now? <laughs> No, I'm not. Are you, totally are you clowning? Are you clowning us now? There's always a chance, but there's always a chance, right? There's a chance that Eric Dyer does a complete fucking muppet, and you know he gives off a penalty to Havertz or Jesus in the 89th minute, and we win it one nil or something. I mean, there's, we're still gonna watch, 
right? Because we want to see what happens, right? The thing is, is that it's 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 it's, it's, it's frustrating because it's, again, it's Arsenal with these expectations with this incredible run we've been on, which has been incredible. 31 goal, 34 goals, four conceded, whatever it is, you know, some great, incredible statistic, which is fantastic. But again, it's the, it's, we always say, look at the opposition we're playing, look at the opposition we're playing. And not as, as, as true as that is most of the time, it's, it's been very, very true this season. Because beginning of the season, we were off it, remember? Oh, we, we were we were furious at the first few games of the season. Trishy, we trishy, wanted Kai Havertz not even fucking washing our bus, right? He can <laughs> go out and pick up Wynn's dog shit for all we care. And now we can't play without him, right? Because Jesus isn't really good enough. And he Kenya yeah. don't even fucking I mean, like, yeah, come on. Right? Havertz, <laughs> Martin, he won't he won't put Martinelli up front for some reason. Martinelli's the only one he won't put up front. Jassard, Eddie Kenya, Jesus, Havertz, Martinelli, well, Saka too doesn't put up front. But out of all no, those, the, the, he barely, barely, barely. See, but, 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 but again, but again, I don't see, why. It, it, again, see, it, it tried putting him up front against Liverpool. But I think, yeah, immediately after that matchup, uh, where he put Martinelli a little bit, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, in What's that like number cool? nine position, after that matchup, what happened to Martinelli? He was injured. After that matchup, well, I know, but we still he was won. injured. So I, I think I now. think if he puts him in those central points as a central mm-hmm. point man for this team, I don't think that Martinelli can physically handle that. Really, he mm-hmm. can't handle it. And every yeah, time that they put him so. down there, he no, has no, gotten a, li- a longer injury layoff. The oh. last time we used him down there was against Chelsea. That's some couple of years ago. After yeah. that matchup. <laughs> He went on a on a long hiatus. He was injured. Well, maybe it was the same thing as Theo Walcott that you know we played Walcott against one game up front. He scores a couple goals, then he thinks he's a center forward, and that didn't work out well yeah. either. Um, no, I, no, but it's like if you're going to be the tinker man, tinker. It's like you know, I, I I just I don't know if I want Havertz or Trussard or Jesus up front because I like I, the only why the only reason. I would say Havertz at all is because he can't get lost. He plays in midfield. He is absolute dog shit. He gets lost. He's not effective. We know this. <laughs> Put him up front. All he can do is stand there, essentially. Right? But he can run on the balls, and he does have a bit of an eye for goal. He's bagged 10 goals this season, which is more than Martinelli's bag. But so, again, he has to be giving us uh, he has to be giving us more than just laying off the ball on on occasions right, when he's not scoring of, goals, sure. because he's just there. He has no skills. Mm-hmm. His skill set is just basically aerially. Of course, he's six foot plus. Mm-hmm. But again, man, you know, just laying off the ball won't cut it. Laying off the ball won't cut it. When it incisive, incisive cut ends into the eighteen year box, what is he doing you know, doing? sometimes some shots. How about that? Right, but we have evidence that that some of, and I'm not just saying Leo Hall, right? That's just one example, right? So, so some of his combination play. Go back and look at some of the games. Yes, it's not, it's lesser opposition, but you know, he's been phenomenal in in in, in some of the aspects that he's played. We've scored goals with him in it. You know, some of those goals, six nils, he scored a goal. Four nil, five nil, he scored a goal. You know, I just, I, I, but, but the Champions League is like you got to kind of just erase the league shit out of our, out yeah. of our head. This is a, like, this is like yeah. the NBA playoffs, right? Or, or American baseball. It's, it's completely separate than the season. It's a different mm. mentality. You step things up. You may train differently. You may implement a couple of different things that you wanted to in the season and you couldn't, but now you can, because these games are essentially a one-off, right? In a way, it's just, I mean. Put it this way, Atletico Madrid could win it. They stopped Real Madrid twice this year. The only two losses I know of Madrid come with Atletico Madrid's hands. And we haven't talked about them yet. They gotta play they're oh, playing Dortmund, I think, today. You know, I mean it's just it's it's bigger, it's it's just bigger than Arsenal right now. We're we're kind of the, we're kind of the up and comers again. I mean, it's been 14 years since we've been to a quarterfinal. And this is 
Oregon Gunner, look at what Drew Gunner said, yeah? yeah he said, right. we're at the point where it all fell apart last season. Yeah, Let's just hope week. this isn't a repeat. Talking about this isn't just a repeat, yeah? My brother, we fluffed our lines in this Champions League, the first Ooh. leg. Good. We, we have a chance. Problem. There's always a chance in the second leg. Good. No right. problem. Right. We, we come back to the league, yeah? This Ooh. time we'll face Aston Villa. Yeah, that'll be fun. My brother, talk to us, man. Aston Villa. Well, Weekend, we our final done. topic. We know I've heard Douglas Louise is out, so that's a plus. But that doesn't matter. Shout out to Elias. Elias is in the chat, man. Tottenham fan, but still a friend down here. He's a member of this channel. So, of course, he has the right to throw me in and say whatever he likes. Big up to you, Elias, man. Hope you're doing well, bro. Yeah. Man. So, I mean, is again, they're going to hit us on wingers. Diaby, Ollie Watkins, you know, they have players that can play. I'm pretty confident. I'm going to throw my head out there and say, I'm going to say 3-1 because I think we do react. I think we do react to what happened yesterday. I think okay. Arteta will want a reaction. Douglas Lewis won't be playing. Douglas Lewis won't be playing. He's going to be missing. Right, right. That's a plus. But I mean, that's, I that's mean, a plus. He's going to be missing Watkins, in that game. Ollie Watkins can play. Uh, Leon Bailey's a baller. Musa Diaby's a baller. Um, John McGinn's a decent <laughs> midfielder. I mean, their defense is, yeah, uh, you know, kind of hit or miss. I'm not, I'm not overly worried. But what I want to see is a response. You know, that's really what I want to see. I want to see, and I, I believe we'll probably give up a goal because I think we're mentally a bit fragile in the back right now. Um, so yeah. maybe a three-one. But I think, but I think we will get a response. I think you'll see pressing that's better. The passing will be a little more crisp and concise um, and the defense will, better be they better will be running around more right they will be running around more if you notice the Bayern Munich to me it's like they weren't really running on defense they were just kind of held back and were running on counters and so forth and Aston Villa is going to be forced into doing that so I'm, I'm pretty confident I don't think the dark cloud is going to hang around us uh Darren says a draw yeah yeah draw a draw is possible but I don't see a loss I don't see us losing Sunday but a draw is definitely possible. But I, I just think we'll be a little more keyed in. I think I think a draw should even fight. be in our conversation. A draw should even be in our conversation. A draw should even be in our conversation. We have to win that match. <laughs> it, 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 yeah, yeah, we have to win. Seven no, games I must win. No, no, a draw is no, no, a draw is out of the question, you know, for sure. <laughs> but it's like we're not gonna lose, I guess is my point. You know, if we draw, that's almost as bad. Now that's as bad as a loss because I think the only draw we, within these last like eight or seven games, the only draw we could have really given away we did was City. The rest we have mm -hmm. to win. We have to beat United. We have to beat Chelsea. We have to beat Wolves. We have to beat Everton. You know, we have to beat yeah. win, win on out. You know, if we and, and and going back to the Allianz, if we go out there and give a better performance and lose two one, I, I'm not. I don't think I'm going to be near as mad as I am today. I'm just mad at the display that I saw yesterday. But with, with regards to Aston Villa, I, I think maybe the dark cloud goes away. Maybe we set up a little differently. Maybe there's just some things we need to work on in training today and tomorrow. And, you know, go out there and just – we'll be at home, which is still comfortable. And go out yeah. there and kick their ass. Uh -huh. I don't know what else to tell or say, man. We need to show – Yeah, exactly. We, um, we need a big performance on, on Sunday. Yeah, we, we need a big, big, big performance, and and uh, see, yeah, that we all know this manager. Yeah, I've told you, I want this manager out, not because see, yeah, it's not like I, I don't hate the guy. I just feel like he's, I just feel he's not the one to take us there. Yeah, but again, uh, but again, I, I still believe in the team. I, this might sound crazy. I still believe in the team that you know this team. We just need a, a few tweaks here and there. Yeah, and right. then we're there. But these guys, I don't trust them to go do the right thing, you know. And again, us not having a striker, a formidable striker, a prolific striker, is here haunting us right now. A winger in place for Bukhara Saka. We never did that business in the summer. It's down here. It's hurting us right now as we speak. So all these things, man, these are the problems. Let's mm -hmm. hope that we'll go on Sunday and do the job, Oregon Gunner, man. We just have to do the job. But which yeah. players do you want to see um out there on um on um 
on Sunday. Mind you, next week, next I think it's next week we go to the Allianz Arena, right? Am yeah, I correct? Tuesday, I think, yeah. <laughs> Tuesday or Wednesday, it's peak, oh man. My, and that's oh what I'm saying. Goodness. It's injuries and all that sort of stuff is think you know is in my mind. Um, I think we play our normal back four. I think QB or probably comes back in left back. Um, if okay. Tommy Asu's fit, I would prefer to play him. But if Tommy Asu is now fit, I'd almost rather play him in the champion at Byron and play QB or, you know what I mean, against Villa. Yeah. Um, so maybe play QB or against Villa um, and keep you know, Ben White and, of course, Starsky and Hutch in the middle. Um, but I would possibly give uh, Declan Rice, uh, not Declan Rice, uh, Jorginho a rest and play uh, midfield of Emerald Smith Burrow on the left, Rice. Rice in the middle, and of course Odegaard on the right, and then my front three would actually be Trissard, Jesus, and Saka. I would hmm. give Martinelli and a rest, and um, give Havertz a rest. Okay, okay. Now, see, there, there's so many things to, uh, you just said down there. Yeah. Do you want to see Jurgen Timber make his comeback? Because they're saying oh. that he's he's okay now, and and they want to bring him back into the team. Do, will you give him a run in? Because they're saying he's okay. So if he's okay, do you want us to give give him a run in in the team? How oh, about that? Yeah. Let's give. You see, I don't want us to go down to Bayern Munich and go test run Julian Timber. If we need to test run a player right now, is the time for us to test run him against against Aston Villa. Give him a go. Let's see his fitness. If his fitness level is okay, then by all means take him down there to Allianz Arena. And again, we could also try out Emmy Smith Rowe. How about that? Rest the big guns for the next week for next week's game. Give Emmy Smith Rowe a big chance. Give Thomas Partey a chance, uh, you know, a running in this team. And let's see what happens for once at least. Right. Emmy Smith Rowe for once. I agree on two out of the three. I agree. Emerald Smith Rowe and Thomas Party should. I think Emerald Smith Rowe should get some real game time because we're at the, at the ass end of the season and we need to use some of the players we haven't used for, literally throughout the season. And Emerald Smith Rowe, if he's not injured, he needs to play. Thomas Party, I think he still has a little bit of comeback, but you know, I I think for Yuri and Timber, no, no, I, I think we need to wait till the beginning of the beginning of summer when he starts playing. So so. so so, so, so even the even if the medical staff have said he's okay, he's been training for God knows he when. Can't be match fit, bro. And and do you want to put in a brand new player in this with seven games to go the rest of the season? Is Aston Villa really the one you want? It, to if he's okay, if the doctor says he's okay and certify him okay to play, hey, doctor said who, I'm who okay. Are we, who are we? We're like pencils <laughs> in the hands of the Lord. We were, we were smart because <laughs> Yuri Timber hasn't played a competitive match in almost six months. And you want to throw him in with the seventh game left in the season, bro? And then, no, I'm just, just thinking. Think about I'm just, that. Uh, I, get, I get what you're saying. Yeah, if he's able bodied, yeah, we, know, because, we know there's a player there. We know that. We know that when we bought him. Yeah, because Kivio was absolutely roasted in that bad mini game, man. I, 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 and, and I saw Zichenko. We, that, bro. We, we have a history of adjusting. And now it hasn't happened last that last season. I know we bottled it, but when we came up from some lo- came up from a loss or a deep or a, a draw that was depressing, we typically won the next game. And I'm pretty mm. confident against Villa, but I don't know if I'm confident about just throwing Timber in the mix with six games to go left in the season. I I, I just <laughs> I, I'm the one Tony I've said a million times. Don't fix what isn't broken. Right? Don't fix what isn't okay. broken. You know, um, you know, Drew says t- Timber in. I, me is a no. It's just, hey, you've been in for so long. But we got other players that have obviously played and have, you know, yeah. are with the vibe of the season, for less of a better word, um, that are that are already kind of fit in, right? Timber, I'm sorry, yeah. you've been an outcast now for like five, six months being injured. I just don't. You know, and I know he's training. I I don't know. I just think it's a big risk because it kind of it messes with this. It messes with the squad, right? Yeah. It, it tinkers a bit too much. It's too much of, of a stretch for me right now because I want to win the league. You know, I want to win the Champions League too. But if I got to bring it down to the two, I want to win the league because yeah. already you know a lot of most people feel the league is the best league in the world. And if you're on top of the best league in the world, then you're the best team in the world, right? 
And and so, you know, there's some arguments to be made with that, but that's kind of how I feel about it. And it's the way league has been so we haven't won in so long. And I don't know, anyone, anyone on any given day in some cases can win the Champions League. In these tournaments, any I mean, it's still real Madrid or cities to lose. And and even Atletico Madrid's, you know, if you look at their record, like I said, they're the only yeah. team that's beaten Madrid twice. So hmm. it's gonna be interesting, but I just don't know if Arsenal play a part in that because I think we do get beat at the Allianz. I really do Allianz Arena. Unless hmm. Arteta pulls some sort of rabbit out of his hat and Saka <laughs> and Martinelli decide they really want it. It's really bad how bad they want it, Tony. It's really how I bad mean, they I, want it. I saw players that didn't want it. They can get it. it. Yeah. I saw players that didn't want it. I saw defenders running in front of Havertz for, for ball. Oh, field. my God. You, know, you know, I saw misplaced passes. That's stretching our leg out. You know, it's those little things. Like I said, the show those little mistakes that freaking Those applause. little mistakes. It happened. Yeah. You know, yeah. because without those mistakes, we're running out of there 2 0. Oregon Gunner, let's be on our way. See, Oregon Gunner, give us um, footnotes before you go and um, shout out your, you know, your channel uh, and and, um, and and other stuff. But uh, just kindly tell us what you think that match would look like against Aston Villa. Your prediction in that matchup, and um, do you think any of the other teams are gonna drop points or whatever? Uh, just look into yeah. that before we go. I think I think the Villa game is, is we're gonna win. I'm gonna predict three one. I think they score okay. on us because I just think Leon Bailey, Ollie Watkins, you know, they're they're, they're goal scorers and they they know how to score. Um, yeah. But I think what we'll see is a different Arsenal, meaning that I think we will still you know it'll probably be the same lineup, not the lineup I wanted. It'll probably be the same mm. lineup that started yesterday. Um, but I think what you'll see is something a little more matured, you know. We went, we went through a very big therapy session yesterday, and hopefully the squad has grown out of it. And that's another comment I wanted to make. It's someone, I think it was, um, I think it was Jamie Carragher actually said something smart for once. It's like, the Arsenal, like, we're still growing as a squad, right? We're still yeah. learning to be what it's like in kind of a new era for us because it's been so long since we've won a trophy. The FA Cup, yeah. you know, being the outlier. But it's like, we haven't always played these big teams in a lot of a lot of over the last few years so this is kind of a, a learning curve again for us and you know i thought that we we learned something yesterday we learned what byron are about so i want to be as positive as drew and say 2-1 but i'm thinking it's a three nil loss for us but it, but but with concerns of villa i think it's 3-1 i think we go there we do what we got to say the character wants us to fail every year exactly um but the thing is, is that I, th I think the cloud, we move the cloud, we concentrate, we play our game, it's at home, we press them, a 3-1 victory, and then we take that with us Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, as for the um, other team, Ma I, Ma I Ma Ma Man City faces Luton. Ma Ma yeah, Man City, City faces yeah. Luton. Yeah. And mind you, Luton, Luton pulled up, see, yeah, they pulled out a very big win last weekend yeah mm -hmm. and see relegation bound so they're fighting see, see they're see ready to claw right it. now and and, and Phil Foden is on another level right now bro He's going to <laughs> yeah my score right <laughs> yeah yeah Phil Foden is, is probably going to get player of the year mm. probably gonna so get what do you think so I'm thinking that um, I think Liverpool drop points uh three weeks from now at West Ham Mm. I think Liverpool goes to West Ham, and that's going to be the game that they watch because David Moyes is going to have them set up and somewhat drill. I know West Ham are crap, but they're going to be at home, and I don't know if Liverpool, you know, are really that good away from home. Hmm. I mean, Interesting. Wins, Liverpool course, faces like, Crystal Palace uh, at Anfield. Uh, that's, definitely, that would be a that would be a smashing, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, right. I, I, don't, I don't see Crystal Palace in there, but I do think yeah. that we do we do make our adjustments. We we will change things up. I think you'll see a different Arsenal on Sunday that you that we did yesterday. A more confident Arsenal, uh, more confident in passing on the ball, communication, the, the whole thing. I think yesterday was really kind of to put it in some way we were kind of investigating what it was all about, right? Because these players don't know, like Declan Rice. 
was purchased for this. He came here because he wants Champions League football. Because he knew if he went to City, he may be sitting on the bench for half the season, right? Are you going to get out Kevin De Bruyne, Phil Foden, and Rodgers? Well, so, mm. you know, Declan Rice was, wasn't his best game. We're going to see a better Declan Rice on Sunday, and we just got to pray to the football gods that he is just on it come Tuesday or Wednesday. Because he's going to be the catalyst. He, he, bet, he better show up. He better show up. He has to he show better up. Show up. Uh, Darren Sullivan is down here and he says Foden is in the England team first name definitely uh, Drew Gunners <laughs> exactly Drew Gunners my brother says here says let's not mix our European performance up with our league performance we're flying at the moment in the league yeah I agree with you but again Aston Villa looms they're coming down to our home let's welcome them uh, you know with a beating so, see you guys. Are we going to shout out your channel, man? Talk to this What's people. up, everyone? Thanks for everyone being in the chat. Great chat today. Great topics. Great discussion. Yeah. Um, sorry we were an hour late today, Tony, but that's, you know, StreamYard. <laughs> that's technology. Can't help that. Uh, but thanks, everyone, for bearing with us and joining in the chat. It's great to see you, Darren and Drew, and a few others I saw there earlier. Um, yeah, Oregon Goon on YouTube. You know, find me on X now at Oregon Goon HD. Uh, every Friday with TJ and Connor on the American Idiots show. And yeah, just, I don't know. I don't know how to explain yesterday. It was something that we weren't expecting, yeah. but you know, uh, we've got to just be prepared and go for Sunday and go again. Right See that, you guys. Go, yeah. Show, Tony. Yeah, sure. See you guys. Go subscribe to Oregon's Gunner channel. You know, I don't know when he's gonna start shows there, <laughs> but <laughs> whenever he does, you know, yeah, just go yeah, try maybe. subscribe to my okay. brother because um, uh, Oregon Gun is my brother. Yeah, guys. Yeah, this guy stuck and stood by me all through. So big up to you, man. And um, yeah. you know, great show we have down here. Thirty episodes today. Oh, yeah. uh, between, you know, for me and this brother. And um, Darren, it would be nice to have you here next week. Yeah. Uh, if you have time, you can come and have a chat come with on, uh, me. Come on, Darren, man. You know, come and have a chat with us. It would be nice mm -hmm. to have you down here. You're yeah, a friend of the house. Uh, you know, Andrew Gunners, thanks for showing up here. Hollywood Rock was down here with us. You know, every other person who joined us today. Uh, Mama Flossie, you know, every other person who came around today. Bagev, big up to you guys. And see you guys tomorrow. Big ups. Peace.